Hello my friends, Jacob is here one more time. I'm so happy that you all joined me so we can talk about the world of the internet. That means everything that's going down on Twitter because of course our, our, uh, our view lately in the media is very narrow. The World Wide Web, the, uh, the 666. That's uh, the, the letters of the uh, Hebrew alphabet, the uh, 666, and also the 23rd letter of the alphabet's www, that's 666, the, uh, the machine, the internet, as big as it is, Twitter is uh, so, so incredibly important right now. so much going on with the bird watch program this has a lot to do uh, with how we're going to be able to interact on uh, online with each other the fact we may be able to say certain things maybe not be able to say certain things maybe be somebody and then maybe not be somebody that we're not supposed to say that we are because we're impersonating the person a lot of people getting kicked off of twitter right now much to the chagrin of uh people like you know twitter people like cat turd who uh, is rejoicing in people being thrown off a platform after, you know, years of complaining about how unfair it was that people were being deplatformed. But now it seems the side that was so, you know, prejudiced against, we'll say, now they're, they feel redeemed because now the other guy's getting the, uh, the getting the boot, right? I think all of this is all distraction and noise, and I think that there is a purpose and a plan to this. Now, why would I say that? Well, because I predicted somehow. I don't know how I did it. <laughs> how do we do anything in, in life? I was inspired a long time ago to talk about these, you know, birdies being put in cages. And by birdies, I mean tweets. is the irony because of course when Mr. Musk took over Elon you know the uh the big the meme going around was him letting the bird be free it was kind of like the first thing he said let the bird be free and he opened the cage maybe that's the case maybe free speech is returning for some others not so much it looks like because there's an issue with advertisers. Yeah, that's right. A lot of advertisers dropped off. Now, before I get into all of the ins and the outs of stuff that is just incredibly interesting, and I think kind of tells us a story of what's to come, so you should listen. Let me tell you about how uh, at the inauguration, which was like the Hunger Games reenactment, I did a video about it, this one, In the tweet, when she said how proud she was of her, and I, I, everybody should be, because that's, that's a lot of pressure, even for a 22-year-old, and a beautiful poem, and, uh, and encouraging, and inspiring, I guess, I don't know. I didn't listen to the whole thing, I'll be honest. <laughs> just, just because, you know, I write poetry, and I love my, I like stuff that rhymes and sounds like Dr. Seuss. I'm very simple. I'm a very simple man. Complex things, that's too much for me. I like to, God likes, God likes to use simple people. <laughs> because it gets too complex with all the big words and all the, uh, the this and the that. I said, so I'm proud of you. And she said, thank you. And I noticed that uh, she'd been given a ring by Oprah. And it was a, a, a caged bird. It's weird, right? I've got birds everywhere. Caged bird. So I'm like, that's got to be, there's got to be more. I don't know what it is at the time. So I start kind of looking into it. 
and uh, trying to understand because obviously I see the symbolism of a messenger. And I think that's great because that brooch- I told everybody that they were coming to cage the birds. Why did I do this? Because of course, the poet that was that gave that great, uh, the 22 year old Amanda Gorman, the a poet who Oprah gave a ring to and it was a bird cage based on Maya Angelou's a poem or something, birdcage. So it was like there was all the rage was about this ring, the birdcage, right? And of course, Lady Gaga had the big bird. It was all about the birds. And I told everybody on the show, you know, it may we we may find the birdies being locked up. Which is kind of what happened because it wasn't much long after when I was saying, be careful. You know, be careful, you birds out there. The uh, the uh, the hunters are coming. The bird watch program on Twitter was announced. Ironic, right? Almost as if we were uh, given a heads up on what was to come. I even did a video that was very funny. Maybe I'll share it at the end of this one, where I talked to my Irish cohort, and uh, he told me all about the bird watch program little Tweeties and the birds and everything else. And ironically, I went back and I watched this. We talked about how kind of like parlor would become, you know, ugh, what it is right now, I guess. It's just weird, right? It's just weird. Well, it turns out that um, when Elon took over, he did something, right? He did something big. There was a story that was going around with, um, you know, Nancy and her husband, Paul, and something happened with like a hammer, right? It was uh, very interesting. And of course, one of the first things that Elon did when he, he took over the platform was he said, there may be more to the story. And everybody kind of picked up on that and said, wow, now here's the thing, right? It would be an irresponsible thing to do if you didn't really fact check or maybe find out that maybe there was more to the story. Maybe he knew something. Maybe he was showing the world that, you know, the truth is going to be known. Or maybe he's really, really super smart and um, he knew that this would be something that would trigger advertisers to say, I'm going goodbye. And, and when they say they're going goodbye, then he has to, what, I don't know, crack down on things so that the advertisers come back, like crack down like even harder than before. I'm not saying that that's, that was like the, the super serious plan that he had. I don't think he had that plan. But I am saying that perhaps, just perhaps, all of these things happen for a reason. Because you see now, now that they're losing so much revenue because a advertisers have gone, he has to sort of prove that you know, nothing has changed. In fact, we're going to be even better when it comes to making sure that the truth gets out there. Elon made a point of saying this. He wants to be the news site. He wants everybody to go to the X app, which it's gonna be eventually. I put out a tweet about the Professor X, right? X and the X-Men, the uh, mutants. I just thought it was funny. That's for another show. But, you know, of course, Neuralink's coming out. This Professor X with the neural. I'm just saying, it's, um, it's kind of on the nose. Like, you know, when, when you're, you know, if you're working with a company in a long time, your friend gets the boss's job, right? All of a sudden your friend's kind of a jerk to you because everybody knew you were friends. And now the boss has to like prove that there's no favorites here. So uh, what, does he, what does he do? He comes in and he cracks down. This kind of seems like that's, there's a crackdown going on right now with the old uh, Twitter space. As he wrote, he put out a tweet and he said, going forward, he tweeted this on 11.6. It says, going forward, any Twitter handles engage in, in impersonation without specifically clarifying that they're a parody account, they'll be permanently suspended. 
And of course, a bunch of people thought it would be funny to change their, uh, their, their Twitter handles to Elon Musk to, I guess, mock the man or tear the man down. It's kind of like, you know, oh, we're going to show you. And then they, they got it like Kathy Griffin went, H3H3 podcast went. It was like a, a bunch of people like, you know, it's not, I guess, not the best thing to do. But I also saw news that it's not going to be a permanent thing. It's almost like it's kind of like, hey, just so you know, I'm not joking around. I'm giving you a chance. I'm giving you a chance to see, you know, that it's this is my platform now. And you're not going, it, these are the rules. You're not going to break the rules. Elon said that uh, he was going to follow the rules. He said it. He told everybody. And I can't tell you if that's a bad thing. Because I'll tell you one thing. I see on Twitter so much hate. So much baloney, so much misinformation, so much... Not I mean, who's the arbiter of truth, right? Pilot, what is truth? He came in with the sink. It's ironic. Now he has to decide what's truth. So we'll see if the uh, voice of the people is, is the voice of God, as he also put out. So they got this program, it's called Birdwatch, okay? Well, they're changing it now to uh, rebranding it. A community title is gonna now be Community Notes. And what basically what Birdwatch is, he actually put out, he put out on Twitter, he said everybody should check it out. You know, he, um, He said everybody should check out this little video and it explained kind of like you have just a diverse bunch of people and everybody gets to, um, you know, kind of collaborate and say w what they see. It's like, it's like, I guess one way of looking at it is like everybody, uh, like a community watch program or something like that. You know, it's called Bird Watch. Now it's going to be called Community Notes, which, you know, I ironically, Jack, the old owner of Twitter was, um, you know, kind of messing with them where uh, Elon said, Twitter needs to become by far the most accurate source of information about the world. That's our mission. Then Jack wrote, accurate to who, right? What is truth? He was, he was baiting him. And then Elon said, as judged by the people of Twitter via community notes, community notes. It's gonna be a wide variety of people. They're gonna decide, they're gonna decide. And then Jack says, instead of discussing that, Jack says, I still think Birdwatch is a far better name. It's more informative. And then Elon said, Birdwatch gives me the creeps. Jack says, Community Notes is the most boring Facebook thing ever. And then Elon Musk was like, whatever, Jack, basically. You know, all of this stuff, it's interesting. And then Greg chimed in and then said, you know, birds aren't real. He says, birds, birds aren't real. Uh, Greg, Greg, the, uh, you know, Greg, this guy. He chimed in, birds aren't real. And then of course, Elon then shared that, which is parody, right? Which is parody. I, I think birds are real. I've, how many birds have laid their eggs and then you know nested and everything else in my house. So I think it's kind of a silly idea. I mean, there probably are some bird drones out there, but I mean, would that be misinformation or is that a joke? Unless of course you're saying that it's a legitimate parody account. See, this is the, uh, this is the, uh, this is the slippery slope that uh, is something that I said was coming. Something I said was coming. Who knew? Who knew that I was going to say that people were going to be putting birds in cages and then and there it is. Elon went on to say, you know, this kind of just forwards the whole Roman Empire type of a deal that's going down, the dictatorship that's coming, the big one, you know, not just the monarchy, but a little bit more. Elon said to independent-minded voters, he started giving a little bit of um, information. People were going nuts over the fact that he said he, he's going to be voting Republican this year. A lot of people were upset. He had to explain things. But then he said, you know, uh, to independent-minded voters, shared power curbs the worst excesses of both parties. He recommends a Republican Congress and like it run by like a Democratic whatever. And uh, I just wanted to point out that the government of the Roman Republic was neither strictly a monarchy um, or a direct democracy. It basically had the features of both, uh, was essentially fundamentally undemocratic society dominated by just a few wealthy people. So yeah, that doesn't seem very democratic. If just the, the people that are the super rich, they decide everything, I don't know. Here's all.
all the uh, the bird watch stuff. This was the uh, the video that he had. Bird watch notes are rated by uh, contributors of multiple perspectives. And uh, this is something I thought was really interesting. I pointed it out on Twitter because, of course, remember before Elon took over Twitter, his voice of the people was the voice of God. He tweeted this out. Well, context of tweets for the people by the people. It's same thing. For the, some of those of you that are, are new to the channel, you'll find that I'll do, I'll think weird things or I'll see certain events like they had the uh, the Gilded Age party, you know, where they all got together. It was like the big deal, the big, big hurrah. And uh, where, where Elon dressed up so hand, this event. It was called the Gilded Age, and I explained to everybody what the Gilded Age was. It was where the excessive, there was the, the wealth and the uh, and the higher, and everybody was like very poor, and it was very, it was a terrible thing. It was like the fat cats basically sucking the life out of everybody else. The Gilded Age, they celebrated that. Ironically, I had um, Elon on the cover of that one saying, out with the old, in with the new. He's poised to take over social media. I talked about it for a long time. that birdcage would now be handed off to him. Just very strange. You know, so is the, uh, is it gonna get worse or is it gonna get better? Here's the thing. I think as long as you do the right thing and you love people, you're gonna be all right. If you tell the truth, if you're knocked off a platform for telling the truth, but you know it's the truth. See, that's the thing. You have to know something's the truth. Can't be just like, oh, it feels true. You know, I saw, I saw a YouTube video that told me that this is happening and it just feels true. You have to know something before you spread that information around. You can't just look at like a couple of titles and then just go off and tell all your friends. That's lies. That's the flood of lies that the dragon, the dragon pours out all over the world trying to keep that Christ from being born within us. The truth sets us free from all of these lies. The idea of Community Notes, AKA used to be Birdwatch, is it's an open source platform, all data is public, and that it's gonna have a wide variety of people. Could be a good thing going forward. I just find it strange because I did that, I did the video about the bird watch and I thought this is gonna be a big thing. I didn't know why, but I felt like it was important, right? After the inauguration and then just a couple of days later, Twitter announces a program like this and now it's like front page Twitter news. It's just very strange to me. That's why I tweeted things like this. So the question becomes, is this all some big plan? I don't know. Like this whole thing, the advertisers leaving, it's like now we need to uh, tighten the belt so that we show the advertisers that they can come back. So that gives us justification to be even more stringent. Or was Elon really trying to put the truth out there? Is he really doing what needs to be done? Has God sent this man to uh, deliver us all? I don't. No, I do know that when you're wearing the devil's champion costume, you just lose a lot of credibility in people's eyes because they don't know that it's nothing or it means nothing. Because in a grand scheme of things, the only enemy there is, we know, is already tempting us from within all the times. That negative voice in our heads, that antichrist spirit in our head. want to believe that God's making things better. I've been saying for a long time, if they be corrupt, let their corruption be known. But I feel like things are going to get a lot more strict. I really do. And I don't know who's on the side of good and who's on the side of bad. So we better be doing the right thing in the Lord's eyes. Because who's to say that God's not in charge of all this, right? Does not God bring, you know, s rulers from the north to invade other places that are corrupt and have turned their back on God? 
Is, is this not what's happening in the world today? Do we not see a great division and do we not see great hatred being just projected on everywhere? Everyone, everywhere, especially people that don't believe the way we supposedly believe. I want to blame everybody. The world's an ugly place right now. It's a sad, hateful place right now. Twitter can be a very ugly place right now. And I don't know if, um, you know, what's happening is going to make things better. But I do know that I was concerned about it. I was concerned about it. And then here we are, you know, and I talked about it long before it was a thing. And I put Elon's face on it long before he was Twitter's thing. It's just strange to me how God works and speaks to us. You know, so I start to think, I say, well, maybe God is behind this. Maybe it's time that people aren't allowed to hate anymore openly. Maybe it's time people aren't allowed to fake and pretend and make believe anymore and undermine. I don't know. I don't know. You got to tell me in the comment section, but I do want you to watch this video that I did long before, you know, Birdwatch was the kind of ma mainstream news. Check it out because it's uh, it's just one of those goofy little bits. It was one of the early ones that I did um, where I talked to my alter ego in the mirror, <laughs> which is interesting. And um, I also tweeted it out as kind of like a little breadcrumb on Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, because I like Twitter. I like Twitter more than the other. That's why I'm hoping that this is a, is a great thing. And I'm going to think the best. I'm not going to think the worst because I don't know. I don't have the inside scoop. But God does, so we better turn to him. Enjoy the show, and I'll talk to you soon. Top of the morning to ya! No. Not today. Oh! We took a wee bit of a stumble, did we? Oh, that's not good. Did you hurt your knickers? This is my favorite vacuum. Did your knickers fall off? What are you doing there, are you vacuuming? I was cleaning this one. I swear, if you broke it, I'm serious. Why are you always cleaning? I'm serious, I don't even know who you are. You broke this thing, you're paying for it, somehow. Somehow. What, you have that OCD? Is that the problem? You got them, that OCD? No, I don't have OCD. I'm fine. I like the vacuum. I like the, uh, I like seeing the lines in the carpet. You know, sometimes you, 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 when things feel like you got no control over things, you know, it's, it's nice to remind yourself you got some control over a lot of things like vacuuming, right? Which is what I was doing before you, whoever you are, interrupted. What's wrong with you? Are you okay? Just a little, uh, okay, I'm a little, I'm a little stressed. I'm a little, uh, well, you're being a bit traumatic, don't you know? A little overwhelmed. This is supposed to be for entertainment purposes and all. You know, it's not just me either. It's like everybody. Everybody seems to be all, uh, everybody's stressed out. I don't even know. Who are you? Who are you? Ah, you should lighten up a little bit, Jake. And who are you? I take things too seriously. Oh, hmm. Then none of this is real, you know. None of it. It's not Israel. You're Israel. Get it? Israel. Israel. I'm not real. You is real. Israel. Stick up Israel. Oh, that's a funny thing, don't you think? It's not Israel. I get enough of that in the comment section. It's Israel. And who are you? Who am I? Don't be born in lucky charms. Give it away. The Irish conspiracy theorist in me. Right, okay, okay. We did that bit like uh, two weeks ago. The Irish conspiracy theorist in you, you say? No, not at all. That wouldn't be very creative of you. My name's McGlynn. McGlynn? Jimmy McGlynn. McGlynn? So now that we're acquainted, you're gonna tell all them fancy schmancy people on YouTube about the coincidence you found from last week till today. Hmm? I don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about, cage birds. But before we get into all that, why don't you address the fact that there's so many people out there that come out there in the name of God. They come and they say, the Lord told me this and the Lord told me that. 
And then no one told him nothing. Nothing. Yeah, well, I mean, people are going to say what they're going to say. They're going to do what they're going to do. You know, whether or not they believe that that's true. You know, who knows? Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes people are misled on purpose so that people can find the truth. So, I mean, who am I to judge, right? Who am I to judge? I don't want to judge. Let's get back to why we're here, though. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You posted something on Twitter about it. And what are you still doing on Twitter? Especially now with the bird watch. I, I just like signed up for Twitter last year. I like literally, I mean, I just got on there. What I, you know? I can't believe you're still on the platform with all their shenanigans. With the fact check this and the fact check that and the this and the that and the that and the this. It's madness, you know. It's madness. They're gonna be sending little bird watchers to watch over little birdies. And they're gonna put the birdies in the cages, just like you said in the video. Like a day prior. Maybe if you came out and you said that God told you that, 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 that maybe you'd have more subscribers. But no, you don't do that, do you, Jake? You don't. So bother you a wee bit. People still listen to these people all the time. Don't care much about the things of God, though, do they? You know what I'm talking about! All I'm gonna do is clean my house and you come on here with your little, with your flute and your thing and your that and your that and you're playing the games and all this stuff and it's like, it's like, seriously, Mind your own business, pal. Well, you can kiss me blarney stone if you expect me to be on Twitter. No one, no one asked for you. No one asked you to come in here and give me a hard time. Are you still on there? I mean, I just got on there, would I? Yeah. Oh, that's because you're old. I'm not old. Sure you're not. That's why you go to bed at 6.30. Like a wee old man. That's because of Danielle. Sure it is. You blame Danielle for everything, don't you? She gets up at like 3 in the morning. It's like... It's like ridiculous. She starts her work because everything's, now she's hybrid, right? So uh, she's got to worry about the kids at, the, at home and she's got to worry about teaching them. And then she's got to teach the kids in the class. And then she's teaching the kids in the class and the kids at home at the same time. And she's being filmed the whole time, right? So she gets stressed out. So she works extra hard. She's got to like come up with one thing for this group of people, group A, group B. It's like ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Dan, the Dan Dan's working so hard and she loves these kids so much. It's like she gets up that early. She goes to bed. She goes to bed. She gets home. And she's like, the first thing she wants to do is put on her, uh, her, um, her PJs, her comfy clothes. If you're not old, what's this then? That's right. Just for men. Just for men. You ain't fooling anybody, old man. That's for my, um... For my gray hair, because, um, what's it for then? Yeah, because I'm getting old, okay? Because I'm getting old, okay? It'll make you feel better? All right, yeah, I'm gonna be 50, okay. Okay, we get it. We get it, Irish. Me liked your last video, though. You, you did? You, li you liked it? It was, it was good? Yeah? It was good. I liked it. It was very good. The whole, the whole cage birdies thing. You I mean, it seemed like you were right on track with that one. I, uh, I thought it was pretty obvious, the whole, uh, you know, caging the birds, it was a symbolic thing, you know, can we, and the idea, the reason why I titled it, Will the Caged Bird Sing, is because it's like, so what, you know, you're in a cage, can you still sing, can you still sing praises to God, right, that's what I'm doing, that's what I'm doing, things are good, things are good, especially when everything's nice and clean and I vacuum, what you mean by the caged birds, though? You know, the bird represented the, uh, you know, the spirit of God, the truth of God, and will the world try to, uh, you know, silence it? Yeah, you're worried that the world is going to come after the truth of God? I don't know. I'm just going to shut you down because you're worried that perhaps there's, like, the government wants everybody to worship the government, and, and you're not going to worship the government, but the, you're scared. You're scared they're going to come over to you and they're going to cage you like an old bird because you're an old birdie, Jake. That's what you are. What? No, no, no. Why are you so dark? You're so dark. Why are you so... You, you sound like somebody who's scaring a bunch of people. Cut it out. Who knows? I'm just gonna be watching your birdie tweets, your little old birdie tweets. Maybe it's a bad, not a bad thing. Maybe it's, uh, maybe really they're gonna get rid of bad people. You know, maybe it's, you know, why's everything gotta be so scary? You know, so maybe it's not a bad thing. Why don't we change the tune? Why don't we try to hope for the best? Right? Huh? Maybe it's not a big deal, this guy says. Oh, you got 25,000 troops freezing their arshes in some basement somewhere. I think, I think that perhaps it's a big deal. Where else am I supposed to go? 
Where else am I supposed to go? Tell me. Tell me. Come on. I'm waiting. Oh, you could go to parlor. Wait, no, no, you don't want to go there, I guess. You know, the way I look at it is if I, I'm meant to reach more people, I'll reach more people. If I'm not, and, you know, and I'll ask for people's help. You know, maybe they could share the videos around. You know, tell people, you know. Sure, 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 sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, after bird watch your stain, I know. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Listen, McGlynn, all right? I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> All right, I got a lot of things on the plate. I got a lot of things. I got my beautiful family. I've been blessed, so blessed. And it's like, I just want to do the right thing. I mean, I, I, if I if I got to worry about going to this place or that place or this place, I got to worry about what I'm going to say all the time. I mean, really, what's going on here? Really, am I living my life? No, no, I'm going to live my life. If God, uh, God's going to move me from one place to another place. So you know what? I don't need your, uh, I don't need you getting me all worried. Not because you're old, fear-based nonsense. Shouldn't you get your walker for you to walk you over to Twitter so you can put out your tweets so the birdies can come over and watch your birdie tweet? I'm not that old. See you later, Methuselah. September 10th. Mars hangs closer to the Earth than it has in 6,000 years. Like the light that led men from the East to a child in a manger, it could well be a sign of good things to come. Thomas James shall be his name. The world will change because of him. In the small town of Bethel, in a time not unlike our own, a child with a great purpose is born. Years later, alienated by his peers and abused, Thomas suffers a devastating loss. When it appears he has nothing left to live for in the world, this is when his true calling begins. While trying to escape the sinister powers that be, a terrifying vision haunts him. Miraculous events seem to follow the peculiar young man as he struggles to come to terms with what he was born to do. The stage is set. The time is at hand. The truth will rise and a revolution will begin. The startling revelation of who Thomas James is, truly, will change the lives of those around him and set off a chain of events long ago foretold. There is more to this novel than one might think. Inside these pages hides a treasure just waiting to be discovered. So if you've ever wondered if there's more to life, or why it is we suffer, then this story will not only captivate you, it may just open your eyes to a truth that could set you free. Find out what is in us all that makes us heed the calling.